the champions of the West. Go blue! <laughs> Coach, you know the words to this one? Yeah, you know, know the words. Yeah, you know the words. <laughs> you definitely don't know. I know seven and all, Rob. Yeah. Oh, no. oh. But where would Michigan football be without players from Ohio? It wouldn't be where it is today, I promise you that. The way the kids are raised, it's not a basketball state, it's not a soccer state, um, it's a football state. What is up? We are back. Big week. <laughs> big dub we got over the weekend and a big, hopefully, dub coming up. But uh, Buckeyes roll over Penn State. Uh, final score was not indicative of the game, in my opinion. Um, Buckeyes handed them 17 points on turnovers. So, anyways, uh, got Sean in here coming from behind enemy lines. What's uh, up? So, man. We might have Jeff Chopper in at some point during the show. Uh, I kind of guilted him into uh, joining the show since it's Michigan week. Uh, we got Thanksgiving up, coming up yeah. this week. It's like one of the best weeks of the year, man. Football every night. You got food on Thursday, drinks all all week long, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then then we eat Wolverine on Saturday. But uh, don't forget to visit thebuckeyecast dot com. Uh, got all kinds of Michigan shirts up there right now. You, you're probably going to have to hit that expedited delivery though to get them by Friday. Um, get it, get it, get it. Um, got long sleeve shirts in as well and I wanted to give uh, some shout outs to some of my most recent customers I should have been doing this a long time ago but um, I want to thank over the last couple of weeks I want to thank Julie Mark, Tim Shauna, Wanda it's a lot of girls buying shirts huh. uh, Josh Mike, Tom Cause, and Todd because the ladies got taste yeah, they do. A couple of times in there. So thank you. I'd like to, all. to cut out in my romper room. I see Joe in Tampa. <laughs> I see Sean in Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. So thank you to those customers. And please, folks, join the crowd. It's catching on. So we're going to jump right. into this uh, little recap of the Penn State game. But then we're really going to focus on the Michigan game. And, uh, all that is coming with that. Uh, so Easy. the Knits left Columbus with an ass kicking, twenty eight seventeen. Like I said, uh, that that game was not that close. Anybody that watched it would agree. I I would think. Um, I who wouldn't agree with that? I mean, there for a second I was getting slightly irritated, uh, but I'm like, hey man, this is well in hand. Yeah, and it's getting closer than it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very uncharacteristic uh, turnover riddled game for the Buckeyes. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. But I liked uh, pregame. Penn State comes out for their pregame warm-up, warm-ups with no shirts on. It seems like something that like insecure teams would do or guys that haven't been there before, you know, haven't been in a big game before. Seems kind of weird, doesn't it? I don't know. They're hype. They're whatever. They, you know, half those guys. We, you know, Penn State's done a great job of recruiting the past few years. Half those guys, you know, are know our guys. They were recruited by our team. Mm-hmm. Um, the other half weren't, so they probably got more of a chip on their shoulder. There's probably more of the guys that weren't recruited by us that, that were out there without the shirts on. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, was uh, was Parsons out there without his shirt on? Of course. Yeah. Was he, he really? Yeah. I, this is not shirts versus skins, guys. Come on. Right. You got to wear yeah. uniforms. You know, they're down there 
we're good and we're a little better. Boys will be boys. It, yeah. Whatever. Trading recipes. Put much stock in that. No, I just thought it was funny because it, especially when you get your ass kicked, it's not a good look. Um, it just seems like, you know, uh, inexperience, you know, to me. But anyways, the Justin and J.K. show was in full effect. Buckeyes oh. rushed the ball 61 times for Jeez. 230 yards. Justin took the brunt of the punishment what? the way it looked to me. Well, I mean, we all, I mean, I, there was a point in that game I was really fucking worried looking at Justin Fields laying on the floor. Yeah, the, the shoe was like a funeral parlor. But but I don't know. I mean, this this to me with with JK. I mean, would J what was JK's uh, total rushes? Oh, he had thirty six for um, like one sixty. I mean, that's almost double what he's done in a game in, in a game against some guys that that can play football. I'm guessing that JK was not feeling great yesterday or today. Yeah, and I I'm hoping. That that he bounces back. That was a freaking effort right there. Sure was. I mean, that guy yeah. ran hard the whole game. J.K. Dobbins is on a freaking mission. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody run this hard down to down and and take on the hits that J.K.'s taken. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't know ever. This dude is balling out big time. Yeah. I, I feel like he's like it's in his mind that like I am not going to be stopped. I am not. He's, he's willing it. It's like he doesn't. He's mm-hmm. willing himself success. I'm just yeah. That first drive was pretty evident, right? They go 13 plays, 91 yards in five minutes on JK's back, uh, just pounding. It, my, my, I'm curious though how he's going to hold up over two weeks of a really hard hitting, uh, facing really hard hitting defenses. You know. Right, and that many carries, and we're going to need him. I mean, I, I'm hoping we don't need him 33 times. Yeah. Um, to me, it's a little, what, what was it? Because uh, Teague hardly got any carries. I, I was hoping that Teague, you know, I could keep Dobbins at 24-ish carries and, and give Teague a dozen. But that's not the way yeah. it went. Yeah, I think I think they got to go to using Teague on third down. Like we got stuffed on some third and shorts that that we should be converting. Third you know? and one, yeah. yeah. I, I like I like Teague's a freaking battering ram. Exactly. I like I love that guy on third and short. Yeah, and like last week and, when we again, got stuffed, don't, and don't move him out to the and and don't run him out wide. Let him pound it in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understood what they were trying to do by uh, splitting out the running backs. They want to spread everybody out and get. The linebackers outside of the, away from the middle of the field, so Justin could take off. But yeah, they did that a little too often for my taste. But um, yeah, three fumbles, like I said, turned into uh, seventeen points. Well, uh, took one touchdown off the board for us, and then yep. the two third quarter fumbles by J.K. and and Justin turned into ten points, and those were deep in our territory. Those were like inside the red zone kind of fumbles. Well, I mean, that first one, you know, where, where Justin Fields is going in and coughs it up right before there, mm-hmm. um, that, if we score there, that's a backbreaker. Because we just had, like you mentioned, the yeah. 91-yard drive right down the field yeah. and then come back with this and boom, punch it in there again up 14 nothing. I think it could have got really out of hand. Yeah. Um, Definitely. More than it did. That was a huge, huge momentum turner for those guys. Yeah. Um, it, it staved off the onslaught. But I'm with you. I was never in doubt in this game. Um, seeing the way the score went. And, you know, Penn State made a little surge. And, you know, like they were saying, uh, the whole game, take Ohio State into deep water. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, frankly, I didn't mind it because, okay, now – I feel like Ohio State is going to have to be in some deep water this year uh, mm-hmm. if we if we want to reach all our goals, and that's fine. I, I think it worked out great that we got some experience. I didn't like when Justin Fields was laying on the ground, and I'm thinking, oh my, that's the one guy we we can't 
lose. Sure. We can't lose him. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. If we would have gone up 21 nothing in that second quarter, take it into halftime maybe at 21 nothing. And if I think if Clifford doesn't get knocked out of the game, I think they're done. And I think it gets way out of hand. Well, they scored none before Clifford got knocked out, right? Right. And then. Well, they had I a mean, touchdown in the first quarter. I actually admired that uh, back. Uh, that back I'm sorry, I'm wrong. They didn't. They did score in the first half at all. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was fourteen nothing, and then they scored with the. I, it, they had zero when that backup came in, mm-hmm. and you know scored those points. And I'll take my hat off to him. That kid ran hard, and you know even our guys, he was he was falling forward for yards a lot of plays. The kid played. Yeah. But give him all the credit, and that and that uh, who's that receiver they got that played that was questionable? That dude is for real. He is a ball player. Hamler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That dude's a stud. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, Predator returned with a vengeance, uh, as we expected. He was a little pissed off. I, did, I didn't expect that. I did not expect that. That was that was insane. Which part? That he... The whole part <laughs> was the, the, the nine tackles, the... What do you get? What what's he get credit for? Three sacks, three and a half. Yeah, that he's already broken Ohio State's record, and he was suspended for two games. Right. I am with Platt and the boys on this dude is the best football player in college football. He makes the most difference. No one can stop him. I mean, no one even comes close to stopping him. Yeah, four TFLs on top of that. <laughs> Uh, I got to give props to our guy Pete Werner, Air mm-hmm. Werner. He shot down that Frankenstein guy. Um, led the team in tackles, ten tackles, uh, two pass defense in the passing game. He, he he did allow some catches, but if you look at at uh, Frankenstein's stats, dude only had like uh, forty yards. Yeah, six catches for forty yards. And that was obviously their game plan was to work the middle of the field with Frankenhut, whatever his name is. So that's the thing that what people don't understand is how underrated Pete Werner is. Pete Werner is a freaking football player. And, yeah, he, he can go some catches to some serious talent, but then he's making tackles, right? I mean, the guy's just, to me, fundamentally sound. He's fast. I uh, I love that kid. Yeah, he's. I'm just. I'm. I'm hoping he comes back next year. Does uh, he? I think he should. Yeah, I, I think he's somewhat overshadowed because there's so many five star talents and first round, you know, early picks on this team, with Chase Okuda, you know, Wade even. Um, so I, I can see how he gets overshadowed. It sucks, but um, I think he's finally getting his his credit, especially with that performance on Saturday. Um, Baron Brownie had had another big day. He's been really flashing lately. What do you mean, Baron Brownie? Let's let's dissect this just a hair. All right, Baron Brownie is a freaking animal. Yes, and might be the best talent on our defense. He looks like an absolute freak out there. He's so fast. He closes quick. He gets there with bad intentions. Uh, Baron Brownie. I ain't seen anything as impressive. Baron Browning since Andy Katzenmoyer, I feel. I mean, he is, he's mean and flying around and getting everywhere. And Borland had a good game, too. I don't want to discredit that. Mm-hmm. But Baron Browning is a, Baron Browning, I think, is going to be just an absolute animal, not only at Ohio State, but in the league on a, on a whole different level in mm-hmm. the middle. <laughs> I think he's going to, he's going to be a bad man for a long time to come. Yeah. A long time. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, a lot of guys got into the act, but um, yeah, those guys really stood out to me, being all over the place. And got to mention our guy Justin Hilliard, Mister oh, Five Star. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Been in the program forever. Didn't play a lot of snaps, but he had the the key interception late 
to kind of seal the deal for us. Yeah, that did seal it. That that is. I mean, I think that's a class dude that was a class act and a class athlete, mm-hmm. frankly. Um, and it's one of those guys that probably any other team in the Big Ten he starts for a couple years, um, but doesn't at Ohio State being a five star. I mean, he was a huge rated recruit. Remember him coming out? Yep, definitely. And is. I don't know. I like that guy. From what I've seen, what I know, I like that guy a lot. I think he's a class act. I think uh, he's got a huge future. Yeah, it looks like he's going to apply for a uh, sixth year, so that will be nice to have him back, add some depth to the DN room. Uh, While we're on that conversation, as is Cooper. Right. Oh, that's huge. So now you've got Cooper... Tyreek, uh, Harrison, and uh, what's his name coming yeah. in? Sawyer? Yeah, yeah, he'll be um, 2021. But right now you got uh, Noah Potter. He's he John Baptiste. Richard. Yeah, you got John Baptiste. You got Tyler Friday. Friday. Yeah. So uh, it's just a matter of some of these guys kind of elevating and becoming, you know, superstars. But, uh, yeah, it's good to see those guys getting a, a, an extra year, seeing all the is- the issues they've gone through injury-wise and stuff. So. The thing is, you, you look at five guys like that, Joe, and then you look at what uh, what Michigan has coming in, and I don't even know what they have coming in, but would you want to trade any of those five for anybody on Michigan's team? Oh, no. I mean, those guys are all huge potential guys. Mm-hmm. They might Michigan might have some you know you drink guy that I don't know about. Um, they got they got obviously some good players in there, but I mean, I love our guys. Damn, we got a lot of good dudes. Yeah, yeah. Chase Young uh, forgot to mention this. He uh, set the school record for sacks in a season, passing Vernon Golston. Um, With a two game suspension, right? And a game left to go. Yeah. Uh, James Franklin, after the game, said that uh, down the stretch, they were just guessing the cadence, and because they couldn't hear hear the. That's what I'm talking about, Buckeye all. Nation. Right. That's that's what I'm talking about. Did you see that left tackle? It looked like he was moving every snap before the ball was snapped. It seemed like he was jumping back in his pass pro before the ball was even snapped. It's like, come on, is somebody going to call this shit? Jesus. They did once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, they should have been calling a lot more holding, too, on fucking whoever Chase was climbing past. But Chase just started, I don't know, it's like late in the game, just started having his way with them. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I think I'm, it was a combination bend, of the crowd and him. around that corner. And yep. And. I gotta say their fucking offensive coordinator is an idiot, though, for leaving that guy alone, either tackle on either side, not giving him help. You're just gonna go one on one with Chase. Have you seen the Wisconsin game? It was just fucking stupid, man. Get him, <coughs> but get, it's, I mean, it's e- easier said than done. Because okay, fine. I'm going to put my best guy on Chase Young, and he can't do it. So now i got to waste another guy, and it's already Ohio State, so they pretty much got me beat at every other position. And now i got to waste two guys on this one guy. And they got all these other guys. Yeah. And so I'm, easier said than done. Well, I, mean, you I can... hear what you're saying. I, I wouldn't want Chase Young because he's been proven to just absolutely destroy games. Mm-hmm. Just absolutely wreck them. Um, yeah. So I would think, all right, I don't want that guy to wreck the game. So I'm going to do something about that. But you leave a, you leave so many holes if you're going to do that. What, what I think, you know, to me, an effect, the only effective way is if you get a tight end or a, a running back that that chips him a little bit and keeps right. him honest or something. 
That's what I'm saying. Um, I'm not saying you need to dedicate a guard and a tackle to him, but you got to get a running back or a tight end there in there to help out, at least slow him down. The guy's in the backfield in less than two seconds, man. That he dips court, that shoulder. He dips that shoulder right. and he's in your shit right, right now. I you never can't, seen anybody do it better. I've, right. Uh, that's like LT in his prime. His, like, yeah, his get off and his speed is he's like a fucking track star on the edge. I love it. I love watching it. Yeah. But your quarterback can't operate with less than two seconds to do anything. You know? Get him two and a half, three maybe. But anyways, yeah, anything else, uh, anybody else stand out that you wanted to talk about from the Penn State game? I think um, yards-wise, we doubled them up. They, we only allowed like 60 yards at the half. Yeah, no, I was I, I was thoroughly impressed with pretty much that whole that whole game. Um, uh, other than there in the third quarter, obviously, and sure. then I was worried because I, I thought I thought Fields hurt his leg, and I'm like, oh my god, that mm-hmm. can't be, that can't be, not now, no way. Right. And then he and then he's back in there for the victory formation and kind of you know walk off the field. So I, I felt better about it, but that I was worried about that. Seriously, I was like, oh, I mean, like heart palpitations type words. Sure. Well, yeah, the the stadium was dead ass silent. <laughs> you could have heard a pin drop in there, man. Everybody was like, oh fuck, because he did get rolled up on. Like the guy, first of all, it was a terrible call. It was a fourth down, and he should have just thrown the ball away if if the play wasn't there instead of taking the hit. And I'm not sure I would have gone for it on that fourth down anyways, by the way. I would have considered the field goal probably. But anyway, so yeah, he did get rolled up on. the. I think it was like a DB making the tackle, kind of buckled his leg and kind of rolled on his ankle and his knee. But um, yeah, um, at least we're learning that Fields is a tough kid, you know. He is, and he took that shot on his left wrist. You know, Uh, he's a quality kid. Can't say enough about him, and you know the expectations and just coming here and doing what he's done. I mean, if if we were to lose out this entire year, which you know, not not to be negative, no, Justin Fields is more than I could ever wish for. Yeah. Now, don't have fucking a pick and two fumbles, dickhead. Yeah. Yeah, and taking care of the ball, it hasn't been an issue all year. So it's kind of frustrating that all of a sudden, you know, we're chalking up. He's coughing up. He had actually had one fumble on that injury where he recovered it, but he did put the ball on the ground. Um, And that was back around, would have been around our 40, so... They would have had time and and uh, good field position, so not ideal there. Well, dude, just getting back to Chase Young, can you imagine? Look how he <clears throat> dominated, like, like totally took over the game late in that game, and mm-hmm. Chase Young ain't hardly ever played late in any games. So I mean, is this is this what we've been missing? I mean, he could have eight more sacks out there. Mm-hmm. That he didn't get just because he didn't play. So well, we're blowing people out. You could say the same thing about J.K. and Fields. They True. both could have monster numbers, like blowing oh Joe God. Burrow out of the water. Oh, I know. I mean, can you imagine if you, if, if you keep Fields in there and he and he's mm-hmm. going for seven touchdowns every week? Right. I mean, we were pulling him out with four or five touchdowns with like 200 yards, 220 yards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joe Burrow has like twice the snaps in the second half of games than Justin Fields does for the season. I root for that Joe Burrow. I can't wait to beat him. I I, I thoroughly want to beat Joe Burrow. (laughs) I want him to get there, and I want to whip him. Yeah, definitely. But we got a long ways to go. Um, That is a long way. Yeah, so... 
I think we gotta we gotta start talking about this rivalry game. Um, kind of. What, what, what week is it? <laughs> it's Michigan week. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving week. That's right. Yeah, I'm right. It's Michigan week. This is the week. Yep. Um, it is time. And may I remind you, Sean, that uh, and everybody else out there, that Michigan is back. So they watch out. They are. They're the they're the trending team in the country. Me, in my guilty pleasure, I uh, I will sometimes read uh, the M Live boards, which is nothing more than there's a couple of, like decent comments, but it's mostly like Michigan State and Michigan hacks. There's a couple of Buckeye fans that chime in uh, that they actually usually offer a modicum of whatever. It's it's, it's a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. That was my son. So, I forget where I was even going with this. On the, uh, I just think about that train wreck of that goddamn comment section. And it <laughs> throws me off, man. It, it, it's disturbing. Yeah. Like you, you, you read that thing, and you might need some some mental help. Yeah. Well, the people it'll that, come back to me in a moment. The people that post the shit definitely need some help. Oh, but, it's bad. A couple of them are bad. Yeah. I, I've been reading that stuff for a couple of years. There's like, yeah, there's probably about a dozen of them that are fucked up. <laughs> I never, I never posted. I never. But God damn. <laughs> They're awesome. nuts. Yeah. So as we all remember, Ann Arbor, Ar- Ann Arbor is a whore. We are heading up mm-hmm. there with the Fox Big Noon kickoff again. I think BTN Tailgate's going to be there too. Uh, ESPN Game Day will not be attending. They have a much bigger fish to fry up in Minnesota. Hey, I love that that game's getting props too. Sure, that's cool. Yep. Uh, weather right now, which obviously was important Saturday, uh, when that rain started coming down, we started coughing up the ball. So weather right now in Ann Arbor is uh, calling for a high of 39, uh, 80% chance of rain, and uh, I don't know if that could be snow, actually, um, and 11-mile-an-hour winds. So a little windy to be tossing it around, and you definitely... Uh, Gonna have to practice up with some wet balls this week, and I'm not talking the ones in your jock. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, as we all know, Michigan's coming in nine and two, six and two in the conference. Took a couple beatdowns early on. Whiskey got him in week three, thirty-five fourteen. That was an absolute. Drubbing. That was like thirty-five nothing. That was oh, like yeah. fucking. That was yeah. That was a hard game for for fucking Michigan, and I know they just hadn't quite instituted the speed and space concepts. And uh, now look out. Um, then what was it like a couple weeks ago? No, it was a couple weeks after that. They got uh, beat up by Penn State, where they had a chance to come back and tie it up late. And Ronnie Bell dot, dropped that touchdown in the end zone, so uh, they, they took the L there by a touchdown. They were getting smoked at halftime, though. Um, they absolutely were, but that 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 second half is like when when you're reading things up here is like Michigan's turning point. I From agree. that half on, Michigan has played uh, arguably some really some. Top, top, and football. Mm-hmm. From that point on, I agree. I, that, I don't. I, I don't know what what happened or what they uh, rallied behind, but they right, def- they, they looked like pretty shitty the whole season up to that point. Right, and then like something clicked. Mm-hmm. I think the following week they smashed Notre Dame pretty good in that game, and Notre Dame didn't even want to be on the field. Um. In that rainstorm, but yeah, so two conference losses that knocks them out of any shot at the uh, title game, and obviously 
keeps them hovering around the top ten in the rankings. But uh, oh yeah, that that was my point earlier on those boards that, and we and we can talk about this later. And you can segue into it is that there was a guy on those boards that made a case for Michigan getting into the college football playoff. And I'll explain <laughs> it to you later when we get there. Oh, I don't know if we have time Remind for that. Remind me of that. That, that was the point. Are we going three day. hours tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 there, there's some math. It's, it's, oh. There's some math involved. I was told there'd be no math. There, there, no, there's math. There, there's plenty of math. All right. Well, yeah, lock it in, folks. Strap it in. <laughs> pour a couple cold ones. That's right. Yeah. We got your numbers. Kick your feet up on the cooler. But, uh, yeah. So, as far as this game goes right now, we all remember the uh, ass-kicking we delivered last year in Columbus, 62-39. Mm. to 39. Ooh, uh, I, I, I'm disappointed that we didn't go ahead and score, like, 75 on them. Yeah, we probably could have, um, and that's that's with a kind of low scoring first half. It was twenty four to nineteen, and we. I fucked. feel like I feel like we let off the gas. Yeah, and allowed them to score more than they should. I didn't know our defense was a, oh yeah full of holes. Right. Um, but we laid off the gas big time. We also set them up nicely with uh, those. Two touchdowns at, to end the first half. Remember that uh, the the kickoff that went off Demario's knee. Oh yeah, yeah, right there at the yeah. twelve yard line or wherever the right. Yeah. They score one play later. Um, yeah, so yeah, at twenty it was twenty four nineteen at the half. Then we come out in the second half and third quarter. We we fucking loaded up on them. We almost dropped forty points in that half. Um, D. Wayne went for five sixty seven through the air. I'm sorry. Shut up. Four hundred. Yeah, he went for four hundred. The offense went for five sixty seven. Uh Paris Campbell had two hundred receiving yards. Remember he fucking oh. filleted that secondary. Chris Olave abused that number twenty eight. Oh, and he got the didn't he get a block? Got the pump block, or- yep, right up the gut. Yeah, that was Olave's coming out party. So yeah, Olave, how Olave is so fucking money. He's gonna be gone after next year, man. We're gonna get three years out of him. I know. That's it. I would think, right? He good for him. Man. He's got to be on the field more too. By the way, I like Austin Mack as a guy, and I know he's he's fought hard and put in his time, but. Come on, man. Olave is producing. Austin Mack's not doing much. Olave is running wild. He was wide open all day in that Penn State I don't game. know. I, I think a lot of it is uh, what, you, what you're underestimating about Austin Mack. Is Austin Mack is a boss blocking. Yes, Austin he is. Mack's one of them, Austin Mack's one of them old school guys that's going to bring it and... And tough as nails. I mean, Austin Max had some tough hits, caught some tough balls through the years, and he can cost and you know fall on his head sometimes. And I don't know. I'm a big Austin Mack fan. I, mm-hmm. I, I look. He's, I love Alave, but yeah. I, I I'm not a fan for get for taking Austin Mack off the field either. Yeah, but. But who do you, who do you take off? You got Ben Vick. I want Ben Vick on there. Right. I want KJ. I right. want Alave, and I want Matt. Exactly. It's just I think Olave should be getting more snaps. I'm not saying remove Mac entirely, but I think they should be fifty fifty at at least, maybe sixty forty in favor of Olave. Because Max, we've seen Mac have his yeah, rough not, games. Let's not take away. I want to see some Garrett Wilson. I mean, sure. Garrett Wilson get a lot of snaps too. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we got a good rotation. I just I feel Olave needs to be on the field more. And if it cuts into a couple guys snaps, then so be it. Because I think it's obvious he's producing. 
Well, and I, I don't know what it is. Uh, it seems like Fields has a comfort level with Alave. Mm. That too, yeah. They All season long, especially after the first couple of weeks, they seem to have a good rapport going. Um, Fields and needs to get on the, that deep ball. He was like overthrowing them early in the year. Now he's underthrowing them. And he need to find that sweet spot, you know. On those big bombs, that would be useful, but probably not this week. A lot of a high pointed that ball though. That was oh sweet. yeah, sweet. Yeah, he went up and got that one right over top of the DBs. Don't forget, Olave is a basketball player too. <laughs> that looked like a lob. <laughs> he went up and got it. But yeah, but, and then there was a couple that he missed that were up there that it was, you wouldn't even think he'd have a chance. He just that dude, silky smooth. Alave is silky he is. smooth. Yep. Yep, he's a stud. Um, Harbaugh had a nice quote today in preparation for the game. Uh, quote, they're one of the best defenses in the country, one of the best offenses in the country, and they play really well on special teams. That's a that's an in-depth breakdown. Good job, Jimmy. What a turd. That's the best you got. <laughs> well, come on. That is the best he has. I mean, you you've heard Jim Harbaugh. I mean, this isn't this is his fifth year. Take the khaki out of your mouth. Game. Jim Harbaugh's a dud. And For that sure. guy is a walking wet blanket. <laughs> yeah. So, just had to drop that little nugget in there. Um, so, yeah, when the Buckeyes are on offense, they are going up against, once again, one of the best defenses in the league. Stop me if you heard this before. One of the best defenses in the country, anyway. Uh, number nine in points per game, allowing 16 points per game. Michigan's number five in yards per game, 13 against the run, and four against the pass. So, we don't have a chance. Might as well pack it up. I would like to see, uh, you know, a close to a 50-50 split. 300 rushing, 300 receiving, mm-hmm. or passing for Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. Just a sound ass whipping, like, up and down the field. We run it on you all day. We pass it on you all day. We mm-hmm. do what we want with you all day. And yeah. then hold Michigan to about 280 total offense. Mm-hmm. Our, our O-line's been somewhat inconsistent on both pass protection and running. Um, I've, it's kind of frustrating. Thayer Munford, we talked about this last week, I think, Um He's probably still not 100% from that back surgery he had in the spring. Um, but he's not getting it done over there. Sometimes he's just reaching. And, at, I don't know, man, left tackle, you got to be fucking solid. And uh, Josh Myers is, is good up the middle. But we're, we just seem to have, like, some holes once in a while. It's just inconsistent, you know. And especially in that practice. Pass protection, that's where it seems to be a big problem. J.K.'s not the best at at, run, at pass blocking either, so that doesn't help. But He's not. He, like, sells out to one side, so, I mean, any type of stun or whatever, he's, like, he's late to the game, and, like, you can't yeah. get that shoulder in there. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Blitz has kind of changed his game this year. Um He's he's going more a, a zone mixture with the zone and man where he was always 100% full go on the man and uh, then we slapped 62 on him last year and he decided that it might be time to stop that shit. So they, they incorporated some zone. Not sure it's going to help because they still don't have the team speed we have um, on either side of the ball. Um, Buckeyes, yeah, I think we'll... Pr- try and be balanced i think they're going to utilize justin fields like they did this past weekend in 
you know, key third downs. If you get the defense, that's got to give you that. Some of those plays got to give you fits as a D coordinator, right? It's like, what yeah. the fuck are you gonna do about that? That that one play, the QB draw up the middle where they had the defense spread out, and Josh Myers took out the middle linebacker like <laughs> five, five yards downfield. <laughs> like, fuck yeah, give me more of that shit. But they they got the defense they wanted because everybody was spread out to both sides of the field, and nobody was in the middle except for the Mike linebacker. No, and and Justin Fields with his speed, he's he'll make one guy miss. Exactly. He's, he's, he... So yeah, Fields converting those third downs is going to be key. I agree. And and, uh, and 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 us stopping Shea Patterson from doing the same is going to be key as well. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to get happy feet and be on the move, and we got to make sure when he does have those happy feet that that we're on that shit. And that's where a tough Borland, Baron Browning, whoever has to close and close quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I noticed that that uh, Chris Evans, the running back, is coming has been uh, allowed to be reinstated in January. He's not with the team yet, so uh, I thought that, yeah, was, that was interesting. The, that was the guy I saw at uh, my kid's uh, batting session. Oh yeah, he looks like a beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so Michigan's coming in with a somewhat, uh, well, not a great attack. They're averaging four hundred yards a game and two forty-seven through the air, one fifty-five on the ground. So their rushing game, uh, you know, started against, off against what defenses? Exactly. Is my question. Right. You know, you're they're beating up on the likes of, you know, Indiana, who we hung a 52-10 to 10 score on. Uh, Sparty, who was beaten down and done. Whiskey, they couldn't move the ball on at all. Maryland. Uh, Notre Dame. You know, so Illinois. They got... They, got Iowa, a, they, they beat Iowa 10-3. to 3. Right, exactly. So, yeah... Their uh, running game is not not going to be an issue, and I think actually Shea is if probably it's cold, if it's cold if it's cold and wet. I mean, I don't know. How do you think that plays into it? So we we got this game coming up. I got to tell you right now, um, there's a bunch of Michigan hype up here that mm-hmm. these guys can win this game. I'm not sold on that shit, but what I am sold on is that Michigan has. Three league wide receivers. Mm-hmm. And Peoples Jones, Collins, right. and Black. Yep. These dudes these dudes are big, strong, and fast. Yep. And this, this this to me is the matchup. This is how this game goes down. If if those guys have big games, we could lose this game. Uh and if our secondary Kuda, Wade, Arnett, Fuller. This is where this game lies. You know our D line is going to get pressure. I know they are. I think they're going to try and throw a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. Three step, three step drop, get it out quick, get it in one of those guys' hands because they're all really good athletes. Mm -hmm. And try and make a play. And that, uh, that bell. That Bell is no joke. That Bell is yep. a freaking athlete. He 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 worries me a little bit. He's yeah. Like he, any any moment that kid gets the ball, he can take it to the house. Yeah, he reminds me of Olave, kind of a slick, you know, smooth receiver. Um, he actually leads the team in receptions, and is just behind Nico Collins in yards. Uh, but I will say none of these guys are lighting up the fucking stat sheet. Um, same with their running game, Charbonnet. No, but if you look at their last their last three or four games where they've been peaking, they actually are. Peoples Jones is is being that Peoples Jones I thought he was going to be. Mm-hmm. Peoples Jones is a monster. Actually, yeah. that Nico Collins and is a monster too. I sure. mean, these are going to. 
this is going to be a football game. I can't wait. This is going to be big, big on big, good mm-hmm. on good. And I can't wait to see. But I, they never met a defense quite like this, I don't think. And they're going to have to have a really good offensive game plan. They're not going to be able to hold the ball for huge drops. It's going to have to be real quick slant stuff. And yeah. that's where I think Werner and uh, who's ever playing uh, the nickelback mm-hmm. and, and these Wade. guys got to be hugely involved. Yep, definitely. Um, I just don't know how, with Chase Young on the field, I don't know how they can move it through the passing game. And their running game is nothing to write home about. Averaging 150 yards a game? Are you fucking serious? It's nothing. I mean, In this fucking league? Yeah. You that, kidding me? What, you kidding me, mate? <laughs> Charbonnet has 600 yards leading the team in rushing. 600 yards, dude. JK has more than double that. Uh, I know that Haskins kid has come on lately and been a little bit more of a factor, but he still doesn't even have 500 yards. Well, here, here's the thing I noticed because I watched part of that game last week. It was at Charbonnet. I don't, you know, I think he's, what, is he a true freshman? I think so. You know, he doesn't want to get hit a bunch of times that hard like that. I, he's not, but that uh, that other kid, Haskins, Haskins was running yeah. really hard. He was running pretty hard there for a while, but I, I think he even got a little bit soft towards the end. Um he had a big. I don't know. He had a big game against Let's Notre see. Dame, but other than that, he hasn't done much. Indiana forty-four yeah. yards. Sparty he only had thirteen yards. Sixty against Maryland. Uh, Twenty-eight against Penn State. Same with Charbonnet. Forty-six against Indiana. Thirty against Sparty. Twenty-eight against Maryland. Uh, Seventy-four against Notre Dame. You know. Yeah, I'm. These guys don't have stats yeah, that are you. jumping off the sheet at me. Um, and no, Shea, like, oh my god! Look at Shea Shea's here. Got, Shea's got Shea's got stats that are jumping off the last three four games. I think he's went yeah. like uh, three or four games in a row with four plus touchdowns, mm-hmm. like broke Michigan records and shit. Yeah. Yeah, he, he has over 300 yards passing against Indiana and Sparty. But then before that, Maryland, 151. Notre Dame, 100 in the rain. I'll give you that. Uh, Penn State, 276. Illinois, 194. Iowa, 147. Uh, Rutgers, 276. Wisconsin, 219 and a beatdown. And 200 against Army, 200 against uh, MTSU. So, uh, he this is this is a microcosm of Michigan and what Harbaugh does. They beat up and run up numbers on shit teams, but they can't do it against mid-level and upper-level teams. You know, um, they they'll put up 300 yards passing. Against Indiana, you know. Do you think Ohio State's mid level or upper level? Uh, I'm gonna. Well, that's tough. <laughs> Get <I'm>, it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you think I was gonna say uh, lower? <laughs> well, we might even be in between. Yeah. We have the shit, and everyone knows it, and that's that. Exactly. We're beyond that, right? We're not even talking about that. We already know that. It's been established. Uh, Harbaugh said so. One of the best defenses in the country. So, And one of the best offenses. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, with the weather being kind of shitty, if it's rainy, it's going to be a battle of running games, probably. I mean, you want to put the yeah, ball in Shea's hand? Yeah, the way J.K. Dobbins, the way right. J.K. Dobbins is running right now, guess what? Charbonnet and Haskins, you ain't no J.K. Dobbins. No, not even combined. Not even combined. So if if it goes down to that, then you're in trouble. And if our quarterback has to make some plays, I think you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. I 
I think they're in trouble. Yep, and you spelled it. Uh, that D line is going to eat well. I just don't see a weakness on this defense, and, and, and especially Shea Patterson. He's not a fucking tough. He's not a good quarterback, man. He he, he might throw some deep balls and just whip them up there, but and he might scramble around once in a while, scatter, uh, scamper for a first down, but. Let's see him maintain a 10-play drive that leads to a touchdown once. You know, a 10- or 12-play drive where he goes, he has to go 70 yards. You'd love it. You'd love it. (laughs) It'd be cool if you did. But, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I think we should just jump into our score predictions. Somebody had a really tight one, and somebody had a really not so tight one. Mine ain't so tight. Exactly. I like it. Okay, you sticking with it? Uh. Yep. Nice. Okay, so Sean's score prediction is forty-eight to twenty-one. Buckeyes roll. Boom. And that's because they score. That's because they score late. That's because they score uh-uh. late. Okay, I should have mentioned them first. The spread is Buckeyes by nine right now. Over under is at fifty two. So Sean's expecting a high scoring affair in the thirty nine degree rainy day. <laughs> it's a blowout. Yeah, my score was twenty seven twenty four. A little bit more realistic for the conditions, maybe. But wrong. Buckeyes still get the wrong. dub. Yeah. We'll see. 27 uh, 24, you're sticking with that? Yeah, I'm going to stick with it. I think it's going to be a tight ball game. I think you're wrong. I think Ryan Day is about to impose his will on Jim Harbaugh and the fake ass Wolverines that Hun- haven't beat anybody ever. I've been hearing in since. In the history of ever. I've been hearing since the summer that Michigan was a team to beat in the Big Ten. In fact, Ohio State was giving a field goal. Getting a field no, goal, we sorry. Were, oh, I thought we were in getting the like summer. six and a half. No, I think we were getting like six and a half. Well, the the bet I the wager I got was plus three, but yes, there there was a yeah. a six at one time. Six and a yeah, half. Yeah, you got in you got in late. Yeah. Well, it's better than the minus nine. You should have bought that Microsoft in eighty four. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, I'm 27-24, Sean's 48-21. Let's get into our microscopes. Who do you have on offense for your microscope? On offense, I got J.K. Dobbins. I think I am... I need this guy this game. I need J.K. Dobbins this game. Mm -hmm. And everything I've seen out of J.K. Dobbins this year assures me I'm going to get J.K. Dobbins this game. I, I think it's going to be a tough, hard game in, in some not great weather, and we're just going to need him to do what he's been doing all year. Um, I, I'm worried um, with the volume of carries he had against mm-hmm. Penn State. But we knew this was coming, right? I mean, that's why we kind of saved him. So, yeah. you know, we, we, weren't give, we, weren't giving you, we weren't giving you 26 carries all year. But when we got to give you 30, we got to give you 30. And the thing is, I think we have to go back to back 30 carries, maybe. And I just, to me, it's going to be on him. If J.K. Dobbins is averaging four yards a carry or more, this is a no brainer game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's going to show his. Um how deep he can go, you know, his strength, his endurance, and uh, especially for week 12, you know, of a long season, hopefully that that second bye week paid off. Uh, My microscope, I don't think I've taken this guy all year, which doesn't even make sense to me. I'm taking Justin Fields. I think this game rests squarely on his shoulders, uh, both 
his legs and his shoulders, actually. Um, I think his legs are going to be key to keep the chains moving and maybe convert some third downs, hopefully not getting third and longs. And um, and I think he's he's going to lead us down down the field pretty quickly for some scores and hopefully take care of the ball. I hope his, his left wrist is healed up, but uh, get a pad on that fucker or something. I don't know. Right. So, uh, Sean, who do you have on defense? On well, defense, to me, this this game is going to be one up front on the line. I got to go with the Heisman Trophy leading candidate, I would think, Chase Young. And I'm expecting... Chase Young to go what he just did and go out and win the Heisman Trophy this week. Three sacks, four TFLs. At Michigan. And win this game for Ohio State in a wash. Predator takes over the big house. I think so. I Were you watching those plays? Even the plays he didn't get? Are you what? I mean... Am I hard of seeing? No. He, he's a menace. <laughs> he's a menace, man. Yep. He is. And that's that's a that's an easy take right there. I'm going to... That is. That's a, that's a <laughs> gimme. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, Sean Wade. I think he's going to be key. I, I think Okuda can shut down whoever he's locked up against whether it's DPJ or uh, Collins or uh, Treak Black, whoever it might be. Black. Black. But I think Sean Wade's going to be key in taking that that slot receiver out of the game. Um, He almost had a pick last week, had one go right through him. Uh, Let's let's see if he can get one. Oh, my God. How did that happen? That was like... He just wasn't looking. He slow-mo, he looked away for one, like millisecond and yeah because in real time it was like hard to believe like what the hell how did that yeah what a game of inches yeah yeah just blew right by him his he was right there but uh yeah i'm going sean wade um because i I think the passing game is going to be key. They're going to get down early and try and play catch up. So they're going to try throwing it around the yard. Well, then we got it tied up because Sign needs to keep that pressure, throw it quick, give our boys back there a chance to react. But I, th- I think there's going to be a lot of three step drops, little quick slants, and try and let those guys make plays. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to tackle well. Our our oh, yeah. secondary is gonna have to tackle well because there's gonna be some. There's gonna be some short completions. Yep. But we're gonna need to tackle. Yeah, definitely. I, I could see Sean Wade actually matched up with that Ronnie Bell. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna be a key matchup. That Ronnie Bell's a playmaker. Yep. He. Yeah, he's he's had good season but so I'm yeah out of the uh, Penn State game right of course he had a lot of flack on that I felt bad for that kid right but I ain't gonna feel bad when he gets his ass kicked it's come Saturday no <clears throat> so what do you want to get into next well, uh, look at some of the big games this so, week. Well, let me throw out a hypothetical to you here, uh, which okay. is bad. Sorry, Buckeye Nation, for this. But if Ohio State were to lose this game yeah, um, in a close game, I will throw out the argument that if we lose this, we still go on and play the Big Ten Championship. We play either Wisconsin or Minnesota, who's going to be pretty well ranked. And if we handle them pretty well, which we will, we're still going to get in the college football playoff. 
I agree, one hundred percent. Away from the, I, I don't think you can take away from the Ohio State Michigan game five and whatever. But right. is it is it the end all be all of Ohio State season? I don't think it is. It really which, which brings which brings up a weird weird question: Could Ohio State have a successful season with losing to Michigan? Yeah. And the ultimate answer could be yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a couple different angles to this because um, I really do think that uh, we could make the the playoffs still. I think it's that's real. Unless we get smoked, which I don't think I don't think Michigan or any other team is going to smoke us, but I would agree. I yeah I I, I really do think this is kind of a, a gimme game. You know, if we win, great. If not, no big deal. It's a rivalry game. We've dominated every game thus far. I would say the Penn State game was the toughest game of the year, even including Michigan. And we handled that easily. Well, we did. So, I think, uh, and we'll smash Wisconsin. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't oh, worry about Wisconsin in, or in, Minnesota. Indoors, no, they're they're in big trouble indoors. Yeah, yeah, on a fast track. Um, we've seen we've seen this story before. Uh, yeah, I think we definitely get in. It might move us down a slot or two to three or four in the playoff, you know, rankings. But so getting right. in is key. I'm not saying that I want to match up with Clemson if we're both two or three, you know, first round. I'd rather have LSU first round. I'd say they're the weaker team. LSU. Yeah. Their defense is not good. I think. Yeah, but you think Clemson's good? Clemson, yeah. I don't think Clemson's that good. They they're coming together. I'm not sold on that. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, I'm not sold. Okay. Well, they've been doing pretty well lately. So, and they got. They're probably going to have Vatek in the uh, conference championship. All right. Well, so you got nine and eight, you, what you got nine points. What'd you get? So, did we finish your scenario? Oh, so, yeah. You had a guy that was on the board that was saying, okay, if Alabama loses to Auburn this week, so that puts Alabama out, mm-hmm. and LSU beats Georgia, that puts Georgia out, mm-hmm. and Oklahoma loses to one of their teams in either, was it Utah or Oregon, that might still be in the conversation, loses... And then, is there a way that a two-loss Michigan gets to the fourth spot? And <laughs> some guy laid it. Yeah, I mean, it, was some, it was some fuzzy math. You think <laughs> they, they can't finish third, or that's what they did finish, right? Third in the Big Ten East. So you know, right. getting in the top four. Yeah, they have two losses in conference. <laughs> One of them is in the East. Penn, if anyone got in, Penn State would get in. Yeah, them. yeah, definitely. Um, I was just looking at the strength of schedule rankings today. These are updated. Uh, Michigan did have a tough schedule. They're they're twenty fourth. We were forty six, but they're zero and two against top ten teams. Two and two against top thirties. That's not good. That's not going to get you in any playoff. Um, we were forty sixth. Two and zero versus top ten. Three and zero versus top thirty. Uh, the other teams with with good records. Uh, LSU. 1 and 0 against top 10, 4 and 0 against top 30s. Uh, Georgia they're 26 for some reason. They're they haven't played anybody in the top 10, 4 and 0 against top 30s. That'll change with their uh, conference championship. 
Right. I think they'll get rolled by LSU. Oh, yeah. Have you seen Georgia play, dude? Their offense sucks. They might be rethinking uh, letting Justin Fields go. I might have said this before a few times. But, yeah. And does, does Alabama beat Auburn? Probably. Without Tua? Probably, yeah. Auburn's not that great. What? The Auburn's like fifteen, but they're not. But they're not that awful either. No, the spread's only three and a half. Is it? Bama's favored. Yeah, it's in Auburn, but Auburn's like eight and three overall, and four and three in the conference. You know, and I'm not too impressed with them. They got a freshman quarterback, so I, I think. Bama rolls them pretty good. Matter of fact, I would probably put money on that. Well, there you go. Throw that in the caddy. Yeah, that's what she said. Who else we got this week? Uh, We got Whiskey at Minnesota. That should be a relatively tight one. She also So it's not Whiskey wins that game running away. And we face whiskey again in the Big Ten Championship game. I wish it weren't so. Mm-hmm. I hope it's not. I'm guessing Minnesota won't be throwing the ball much. Uh, Wisconsin's favored by two and a half right now. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, whiskey wins, and they go to the Big Ten Championship game to ultimately get smashed again. Yeah. Uh, Even worse, maybe. Yeah. Who else we got here? We got Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. The only reason to talk about this one is because uh, Oklahoma just has the one loss, even though they've looked pretty fucking flimsy in the rest of their games. Yeah, and Oki State could, could potentially beat them. Yep. Oklahoma's favored by 13 and a half, though. That's a night game Saturday night. That, that'll be worth watching. It'll be a high-scoring affair, as we know. Defense is optional in the Big 12. Florida, Florida State, that used to be a ball game. Saturday night. That did used to be a ball game. LSU has Texas A&M coming in to their place. A&M 7-4, they're garbage. What do you think about uh, Tom Herman taking some heat? Seems uh, some big money boosters are not too happy with his performance. I know, what's with that? Well, I wouldn't be either. I mean, sure, they've had some injury issues, especially on defense, but if the big money boosters aren't happy, heads, you know, seem to roll <laughs> when that happens. I know, but maybe I'm getting cynical, old, whatever, but kind of like the, the Harbaugh and the, who the fuck else are you going to go get? Sure. I mean, I guess, who's out there that yeah. you're really excited about getting? Well, I'm wondering if unless maybe, you're totally con- unless you're totally convinced that the guy you got is a long term fucking loser, mm-hmm. you got to have a plan in place, right? Yeah, um, I'm wondering if uh, maybe Tommy Boy isn't isn't the uh, great recruiter and and head coach that he was kind of built up to be. Maybe he's a great offensive coordinator, but maybe he's just not good at the whole enchilada. You never know, right? Yeah. Because he's getting beaten on the recruiting trail pretty badly. Uh, Obviously, that's, you know, the Garrett Wilson loss was was why uh, he sent Brett McMurphy in against uh, Zach Smith and Urban Meyer. So, 
I don't know. I'm not sold on Herman personally. I think he's kind of a cheese ball. I think he worries way too much what people say about him, especially in the media. Um, he's got rabbit ears, kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, worries about that shit more than being a coach. Exactly. Um, do you see him busting it, trying to headbutt players this week before the game, <laughs> wearing helmets? You sent me. You sent me that. Yeah. He tried that shit at Ohio State, and uh, when Vrabel was the defensive coordinator, <laughs> so uh, Zach Smith was telling this story on his podcast. Tom Herman likes to like do this fake headbutt. He doesn't do it face to to face mask. He does it like plastic to forehead, like the top, the crown of the helmet. Right. So, Vrabel, <laughs> I think it was before the Michigan game, and uh, Vrabel used to always make fun of him, I guess, for doing this little pump-up thing. And uh, and Vrabel went up when Herman did this right before the Michigan game. He goes, move it, pussy. I'll show you how it's done. And he goes, wham! And fucking blood started squirting out his forehead. And uh, if you go back and check the tape, Vrabel's wearing a fucking big ass bandage on his forehead for the whole game. <laughs> nice. Yeah. To be expected. I mean, Vrabel's a meathead. It's going to do that, but yeah. He always made fun of Tom Herman for doing this fake tough guy routine. Which well, it I just is. think we just it is handle fake. business like we always do and win by. Four scores. Yeah. And seven years ago. <laughs> four scores seven years ago. Yeah. So last thing before we get out of here, let me get your uh, CFP top four since they don't come out until Tuesday night. Who do you have? I'll still go uh, LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, I still think it's Bam at this point, but not Georgia, huh? I mean, give it to Georgia now, but it's Bama. Okay. I'm going same top three. I'm going LSU. Uh, yeah, LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia. I think uh, until Bama proves they can they can move the ball well against a good team. Playing an FCS team last week doesn't get me jacked up. So, um, yeah, I'm going Georgia, but uh, they could definitely fall after this week if if Bama crushes Auburn. Right. So. Well, um, but the thing is, Georgia gets to figure it out against LSU in the championship game, right? Sure. That'll be. Thing is, what what happens if Georgia beats LSU in that game? Well, then Georgia's going to move up. Yeah, they're definitely not going to be four. Well, no, but then what happens to LSU? Depends. If, they, it's, if it's close, I think LSU stays in the top four. Probably goes to four, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Ohio State goes to one? Yeah, assuming we win out. Clemson goes to two or three. Well, maybe yeah. stays to three, and Georgia goes to two. Yeah. A lot of football. That's a lot of football. Yeah. Some good football games to be played. Yeah. And do, do any? But do any of the Big Twelve, Pac Ten, do any of them even get a whiff? Utah, maybe. Oregon. Oh, they just got beat by Arizona State. Mm. They're definitely out. Okay. Utah has one loss. Um, and they should they'll they'll beat Colorado this week. Um, their one loss though was to USC, who isn't even ranked. It was at USC. Um, they haven't played anybody though, dude. The schedule is garbage. 
BYU, Northern Illinois, Idaho State, Washington State, Oregon State, Arizona State, Cal, Washington, UCLA, Arizona. This is a whack ass schedule. I don't know how you get these. I don't know how you can tell me that anybody from the Pac 12 is worthy of being in the top four. This conference is terrible. And definitely not Oregon with two losses. No. That'd be like the argument that the Michigan guy made on how Michigan gets in mm-hmm. at number four. Exactly. <laughs> Oklahoma is the one outlier that I could... They're the only ones I could see sneaking their way in. I don't see Penn State doing it. Um, no. Not with two losses. I, I think you basically have to rule out any two-loss team when you have one, two, three undefeated. You know? What if... What if Iowa State wins this week and loses to Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship? Is Ohio State still in? Hmm. That would be a tough one. It depends if it's close. Possibly. Whiskey's not getting in. No, no. No, they're two lost team. The only upside for Utah is that they would probably play Oregon in their Pac-12 championship. So maybe if they got some style points and ran it up on Oregon. But that's the other thing with Oklahoma. They're actually ranked above Utah. So if they went out, which they easily could, um, I could see them finding a back door in. But that means somebody in the top four right now is going to have to drop out. I think if we were to lose, we'd drop to like five or six, and then we'd win the Big Ten Championship game and go back up to four at minimum. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, We're in. People believe us. We're in. That's right. Anything else you want to cover? No, beat Michigan. It's the game this week. That about covered it. <laughs> That's right, folks. It is Beat Michigan Week. As I mentioned earlier, keep an eye out for new shirts. I got a couple others in store that are uh, holiday themed and also national championship themed. So keep an eye out for those. Let's go, Bucks. Let's uh, let's try and get the OHIO going around the the big house this week. So good luck to anybody that's heading up for the game. I did see some posts on the on the M Live. They're like, "Don't sell your tickets to random people. It's Buckeye fans, <laughs> and they'll fill the stadium." Yeah. Like, make sure if you sell your shit, you sell it to Mason Blue. <laughs> <laughs> How that's do you know scared. that? How do you know who you're selling that's it to? That's <laughs> stupid. They're scared. Yeah, they should be. Yeah. I've heard stories of, of people actually selling them to Buckeye fans. Not on purpose, not knowingly, but I don't know how you can prove you're a fan of either team. You know, right. For fucking tickets. I mean, anyway. So, yeah, let's go, Bucks. Let's finish this season strong. As predicted on this show, Buckeyes should go 12-0. and um, Everybody called us homers back then. Oh. Who's your homer now? That's right. I know. That's right. You want to check tape? So Take anyway. to the tape. <laughs> so yeah, um, hit the BuckeyeCast.com, subscribe, rate, review the podcast. We would love some five-star reviews. Uh, we would love a single star five-star review. I don't think we've had any. So help a brother out. Sean, thank you for joining us. Good luck up yes, there. Yes, sir. Enjoy the uh, festivities. And uh, I'm heading. I'm heading south. I'm getting out of here. I yeah. can't be up here for this. Yeah, the smell of burning Go Wolverine just home. isn't good. Going back to the homeland for the weekend for the holiday. All right. All right. Go Bucks. 
We'll see you next week.